O Lord, with my contenders, fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise in my defense, Lord, my mighty help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, good morning. It is Monday, the 60th day of April, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2020. It is Monday of Holy Week. Remember, we started Holy Week yesterday after celebrating Palm Sunday. And I want to request you to journey with me throughout this Holy Week so that we can reflect together. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, allow me now to share with you the Gospel of the day. Let her keep it for the day of burial. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Mother served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a proud of costly ointment. She took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box he used to take what was put into it, Jesus said, Let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came, not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus into death, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. My dear friend, today again we have a dramatic, a dramatic piece of the Gospel that we are reading, pitting for people. We've got Jesus, we have Mary, we have Martha, and we have Lazarus. Now, I want to talk more about Mary. Today, it is about her anointing the feet of Jesus. We are told that she actually poured the entire liter of expensive oil 
and then dries that with her own hair. You know, Mary, one writer says that Mary recognizes that Jesus is the person on, on whom she wants to pour out her treasure and her very self. And that now is the time when Jesus is before her, she holds nothing back, no matter how foolish she might appear to other people. Now, this is the great lesson. Mary pours out her treasure in her very self to Jesus. That is called emptying herself. Mary emptied herself. At the sight of Jesus, Mary realized her nothingness. And this is where we take one of the lessons that we carry this day. In front of Jesus, what do we give? In front of Jesus, what do we give? Mary has given everything. The most expensive, in fact, that even Judas Iscariot is actually complaining. Now this is the challenge that we are getting this early morning. That at the sight of Jesus, we give him our best. And I always ask, when did you give a gift? A gift that actually pained you. This gift of Mary actually pained Judas. It did for sure. So when did you give a gift that pained you? She gave herself her everything. Today we are called to give our everything. Maybe the other people may not like you. What I say, they'll say this or the other one. As a believer, always be prepared to get people who malign your name on account of nothing. Maybe just by believing and giving your best. Think about even when we are helping others. If you are asked to give a gift for somebody, maybe who is stuffing, or maybe who has, who has no clothes, what do we give? Are we men and women who can give our best? Even when it comes to our support of the church, do you give your best? And today I want to challenge yourself. Stand and tell Jesus, this is the day I have decided not just to follow you, but to give you my best. We keep on singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Now I ask, deciding to follow Jesus is one thing. Emptying ourselves for him is another game altogether. And that is the crux of the matter. We give the best. Having done that, now we think about Martha. Martha and Lazarus, these are another two very, very exciting uh, persons. Martha knows her work. She knows that for the sin to be spruised, for life to be good, she knows her work is to serve. My dear brother, my dear sister, have you identified what it is your purpose in life? Today, if I can ask you, why do you wake up every day and you go hustling? Why? If I asked you, what, why, what are you doing in this world? What are you doing? If you are to die today, what will you be remembered for? If God is going to give you the next 70 years, what will you do with the 70 years? Have you identified your use? God wants to use you. Are you ready? Have you identified? Mother did. She knew it is to serve. But finally, finally, the best is Lazarus. This is the guy who was raised the other day. 
This is the man who is just there to celebrate and to appreciate the grace of God. This is the man who knows what it means to come from the dead. We are told he is reclining at table. He is just there, quietly and adoring as it were. In fact, Charles Dodd says that for Lazarus, this is the greatest moment of adoration. Looking at Jesus and actually knowing where the journey he has taken with Jesus. I always like it when people tell me, Father, I know the journey that I have taken with my Lord. Lazarus knows. My brother, my sister, what journey have you taken with the Lord? Can you stand and say, Mimi na Yesu tumetokabali. Mimi na Yesu tumetokabali. Me and Jesus, we have come from far. We have come from far. Appreciating what he has done in your life, maybe there was a day that people thought you were dying. You didn't die because God wanted you alive. Maybe there was a time your business was completely down and people thought, hmm, he's out of business. Oh, she's out of business. And God came to your rescue. Maybe there was a time that your marriage completely was going to the drains and you cried to him and today you can stand and say, me and Jesus, I know where we have come from. I know. I want to challenge you this great morning. Wake up proclaiming something. I know where me and Jesus, we have come from. I have identified what it is that I'm supposed to do. And when I give my gift, I will give the best, the best. I keep on telling people, whatever it is that you do, give it a touch of quality and a taste of excellence. On the same breath, when we give a gift, Give the best. Reveal the gifts you have given to individuals, to the church, to the family, to God. Did you give a gift that came from your heart or it came from your pocket? My challenge for you today. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love, Look upon the heart dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries so that under your protection we may keep safe this remedy for eternal salvation which by your mercy we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities, not only with the bodily observance, but above all with the purity of mind, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, do have a protective Monday, Asante Sana.